Welcome everybody, this is the Photoshop Workbench and I'm Mark Johnson. On today's edition of the Photoshop Workbench, we are going to go on a wildlife safari. What we're going to do is pursue a graphic design look that was inspired for me by the Outrigger Resorts print ad campaign. In that print ad campaign, they combine an image, sometimes more than one image, with beautiful vector shapes. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to incorporate those vector shapes into our photographic image here, but we're actually going to use two images for this workbench and bring the two together using these vector shapes. The first image we're going to use is submitted by Anton Karstens from South Africa, shot of these two zebras here. And then the next image that we're going to use is submitted by Chris Judge from, I believe, Whidbey Island in Washington State. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. Now that we have this image open, what we want to do is expand the canvas so that we can import the other picture. To expand the canvas, we'll choose Image, Canvas Size, and in the Canvas Size dialog box, you notice I have Relative checked here. So relative to the existing dimensions, I'm going to be adding extra inches. So I want to add extra inches to the height here, and I'll go with 4 inches, and I want to anchor my existing picture to the top of the frame, or the top of the canvas. Canvas extension color is set to white. That is perfect. So I'll click OK. Let me shrink this down so that you can see it a little better. And now what I want to do is bring in this other image submitted by Chris, and I'm going to import it to Anton's image. And I'll do that by choosing Select All, Command or Control A, Edit Copy, which is Command or Control C. I'll move back to the original image and choose Edit Paste, which is Command or Control V. Now you can see that when I brought this in, it is a large picture, so I'm going to need to scale it, but let's first name these layers. I'm going to double click on layer one here and call this Seagull, because I think that's what the bird is. I'll double click on the background layer name. Don't worry that it brings up the new layer dialog box, that's perfectly fine. Just go ahead and title that one, whatever's on that layer, and in this case, it's zebras. So I'll make the seagull goal layer active here, and in order to effectively scale this so that I can see the zebras properly, I need to reduce the opacity of that layer. Now what I'm going to do is choose Edit Transform Scale, or you can do it with Edit Free Transform, which is Command or Control T, and I want to scale this down and then drag it so that there's a lot of overlap between the two pictures. Kind of like that. All right, now I'm going to press Return or Enter, and that will commit the transformation. And I want to eliminate this additional overlap right up here. There's too much. I want to have some overlap, but this is just way too much for what I want right here. I practiced this before I recorded this workbench, and that's why I know I don't want that much seam. Only practice um, and passion is going to help you to figure out how you want to design your own photo uh, collages like this one. So what I'm going to do is eliminate this area at the top, and that means I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool and drag right across here, just like that. And then I'm going to I'm going to be adding a mask here. But if I want the mask to do what I am asking it to do, I need to choose Select Inverse and then add the mask. When I do this, you'll notice that it hid this area right up here. OK, now what we want to do is restore the opacity of this picture back up to 100%. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this slider here so it's back up to 100%. Now what we're going to do is get rid of this excess white area right down here. That means we're just going to crop it away. So I'll use the Crop tool, and I will drag the crop right down across the pair of images like that, and then press Return or Enter so I have nice clean edges. This is where the fun part really begins. What we're going to do right now is start adding our custom shapes, and you're going to see how those custom shapes are going to help us to blend these two pictures together. So I'm going to come down here to the rectangular marquee, or sorry, the rectangle tool, 
and click on it and slide down to the custom shape tool. Now what I want to do is load up all of the custom shapes that Adobe offers here. So I'm coming to this little menu right here. I'm going to go to the flyout menu and choose all shapes. And it asks me if I want to append my existing list of shapes and I absolutely do. Now I want to make sure that I have a brand new, so I'm clicking right here, I want to make sure that I have a brand new shape layer and that my color for this layer is pure white. So I'll click right up here and click OK. Now I want to make sure that I have the right tool, so I'm going to come to this little fly down menu one more time and I want to choose this one which is just off screen. You can't see this. There's one down here called Flower 7. It looks just like this. So it's just off screen called Flower 7. You can choose any shape you want. In fact, you can create your own custom shape and that can be a, a, an exciting way to um, really take this technique to the next level. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag that shape out just like this. I'm going to drag some others out as well. I'm holding the shift key as I do this. And you can see I'm just sort of dragging along the seam here just like that. So I just dragged along the existing seam just like that. Now you'll notice if I zoom this forward you're going to see a little bit of an outline around those right now and that's because these are a um, on a custom shape layer. When you click on other layers that little outline disappears. So don't worry it's not something that is permanently there. Now what we want to do is make it so that this blue seagull picture extends up into this part of that custom shape and so that the bottom of the zebras, the green part of them, extends down into this part here. So we're going to have to go through a little bit of a, a um, masking rigmarole here in order to make that happen. So what we'll do first is we will pull a selection off of this shape layer by holding down the command key on the Mac or control on a PC and clicking on this mask which gives us a selection right here. Now what I want to do is go to the seagull layer, make that active, and then I want to do a command or control J and it will float the seagull layer within this selection up onto its own layer. So I'm going to do a command or control J, it floated it up onto its own layer, in fact I can prove that to you, there it is. And I want to drag that to the top of the stack because that is um, what I want visible right up in this area here. Let me switch off the visibility for the layer below, which is the shape layer. I'm going to switch that off. And now what I want to do is figure out a way so that the zebra image can extend down here and break the plane, the upper plane of this blue seagull image. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to go through some more kind of fancy stuff. First thing I want to do is hold down Command or Control and click on either layer one here and let me let me just call this blue shapes whoops blue shapes so command or control click on the thumbnail for that layer to pull the selection again and now what I want to do is strip that selection away from this area where it's overlapping the zebras so I'll use the rectangular marquee and I'm going to choose this time subtract from selection I'll drag this out just like that and I will subtract that upper part of the selection right there. Now what I need to do is apply what I've just done to the blue shapes layer and to the seagull layer. So that means that I'm going to have to invert my selection by choosing select inverse and then adding a mask to the blue shapes layer. Now I need to go down or I need to pull that same marching ant selection I had a second ago out of here. I'll do that by holding down Command or Control and clicking on the, let me show you the mask, there's the mask. So by holding down Command or Control and clicking on that mask I now have the shape um, loaded up or I have the marching ants loaded up. I'll go to the seagull layer specifically to its mask and I'll fill that with black. Black is my background color right here so I'm going to do a Command delete or a control backspace. If you prefer the, whoops, I needed to invert my selection first. Select inverse and then command delete or control backspace. If you prefer the menu item for that it's edit fill and then you can choose black here. 
But you can see th what that did to my image here. Let me choose select, deselect, and get rid of those marching ants. Notice now how I have this sort of shape design that's blending the two pictures together, and this blue picture is showing up here overlapping the zebras, and then the zebra picture is showing up down here overlapping the seagull picture. So it starts to become a rather uh, complex, beautiful design. One thing I'm noticing is my zebras didn't get down far enough here, so I'm just going to real quickly, and I'll just make them visible by holding down Option or Alt, make that layer active, use the rectangular marquee tool in the new selection mode. I'm just going to drag this area down further. So I'm going to do a Commander Control J to float that up onto its own layer. And I'm going to transform it with an Edit Transform Scale and just drag it down so it covers a little bit more ground. I'll press Return. I'll switch these other layers back on and you'll notice that now I'm covering the distance right there. So it really does pay to have extra space around your subject so that it can um, overlap heavily into the other image. Now I want to finish this piece off by really doing a few nice things to the, the design to sort of complement the look of these vector shapes that are in here. So what I'm going to do is create some more white vector shapes around the perimeter of the design. I'll start by making the blue shapes layer active, the very top layer, so that I can just stack new shapes on top of that. I've got the custom shape tool. I'm still working with the same shape, and you could work with any of them here. There's nothing saying you have to go with that one. And I'm just going to start making a bunch of sort of random little flower shapes around here. So you can see how this, if this were an advertisement, it's all kind of coming together at this point. Tying in all the elements, we'd probably drop some text in here. But whether or not you're doing an advertisement isn't really important. Ultimately, this is just a fun project to do. And it's another way of, of exhibiting your beautiful work. Let's do one little one there. And then what I want to do, I'm going to click off this layer because I want to create one more shape layer. So I'm going to click down here for a moment, commit what I just did. I'm going to click back on the top here. I want to create a unique shape layer. So now this will come out as a brand new unique shape layer. See how it built a new one right there because I clicked off of shape two. And let's actually move that. I'm using the move tool to drag it in a little bit. So I want it to overlap heavily here and then to complete the effect I want to reduce the opacity on that shape significantly, just like that. And I'll press return or enter. I'm going to click on a different layer so that little thing goes away. And I'm going to try to zoom this bigger, see if I can get away with doing that so you can, whoops, so you can see a little bit more of the design. There we go. So it's up a little bit larger now. So th today what we did is we brought together two different photographs and we combined them by using vector shapes. Um, I love this approach. This is something that I just started exploring after I saw the Outrigger ads, and I'm, I'm really into this. I love the look of this. I hope that you also enjoyed the ride, and I want to thank Anton for his submission and Chris for his submission. Let me show you a quick before and after. That's how we started, and that is how we finished. I hope that you all have a, a day that is infused with vast creativity. Take care.